predictions about astronomical objects generating gravitational waves have been around since the beginning of general relativity. Over the years, emphasis has been on developing the machines which were capable of detecting the waves themselves. Despite people saying we were all crazy and we'd never detect anything, I didn't believe them. One of the prime reasons for having LIGO was to show that there were such things as gravitational waves. For 15, 16, 17 years we had been doing work and never seen anything. I think I started to hear whispers of this first event, the autumn of 2015. I got an email saying there's been a really interesting event. I wanted to tell someone, but everybody that I could tell in Australia was already asleep. When I woke up, my email box was absolutely full of messages saying, we've got to find out whether or not this was a blind injection. We were on the phone to one of our colleagues, Professor Sathya Prakash, when Sathya suddenly said, but you do know something, some, some, something's happened. There's been really interesting signal, he said, no. That was exceedingly exciting. And I mean, the amazing thing about it was we hadn't even started the science run for the two advanced LIGO interferometers. I don't think at that point we believed we'd made a detection because it was so early in the run process. But it was so clear that you sort of looked at it with a big smile on your face. Honestly, at the very beginning, I didn't pay much attention. Probably noise, the glitch in the detector. Then, when it became clear, it was a, a crazy period at the same time, uh, a period that I will, will never forget. I mean, probably the most re rewarding period of my scientific life. As soon as we believed that signal, we were in the new era of observational gravitational wave astronomy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have detected gravitational waves. We did it. It was an amazing step forward because all evidence for black holes before then were indirect. So immediately, we not only proved that black holes existed, but that also that binary black holes existed. And also that Einstein's original prediction from 1916 were essentially correct. It changed everything. It really catapulted the field into the mainstream, like discovering a new sense, that you could pick up the universe and different phenomena in vast different ways. It was the beginning of a new chapter of uh, scientific enterprise. We are now entering an era where we regularly observe gravitational waves. The field has exploded in the past decade. We've gone from one detection to a few hundred. In the next 10 years, we might get to thousands or tens of thousands. And what that's doing then is you're really understanding this population. What are the black holes in the universe look like? How massive stars form, how they evolve, how they then merge, they get together. The first breakthrough was just, it is there. But now, how does it look? What does it actually do? So it's very exciting to finally have that toy to play with, to show that you were right, and to see all these kind of new things that finally worked. We now get really into the science, the science of the populations, the sources, but also planning for this new generation of detectors. The future is to increase the arm length further. In Europe, up to 10 kilometers, what's called the Einstein Telescope Experiment, or in the US, to go up to 40 kilometers. And with an increase in sensitivity, we'll shoot up many, many more events and understand better how these binary black holes are formed. We'd like to observe many more neutron star merger events to understand neutron stars better. For example, the generation of heavy metals such as gold, and people are excited with the coming space-based laser interferometers. In space, we will see sources in their thousands. In fact, one of the problems is you will expect to see so much that it'll be hard to distinguish one thing from another. So it's a whole new challenge, a very exciting one. We're still explorers. 
We've still only explored our local universe. There's still huge amounts of our universe still to explore. There's so many of us now working on this and finding so many new things, not just looking at the gravitational waves, but also understanding more about our universe. We're still riding this first detection and the impact it's had, even in terms of jobs and PhDs. When I started my PhD, it was one day we'll be able to detect them and then suddenly actually having it was really exciting. This opened a, a new window into the universe and it really kind of catalyzed my return to academia. It sparked my interest in the field and so I was actively looking for a chance to study gravitational waves. It encapsulates information about the universe as a whole and that feels so fundamental to me. We all have one goal and the fact that we all as a community work together and design what is essentially the most precise instrument in the world. I think that's very nice. Before the detection, I really was supremely only interested in making the machine work. But as soon as we made our first detection, suddenly I realized the astrophysics could actually start to mean something. I got hooked as a young person on the idea that we could be part of a much bigger picture. What I see when I give talks in schools is that there is a lot of curiosity about what is out there. And we have brought a whole new sector that was dark before. And that is exciting also because you can show what mankind, what scientists together can achieve. We're really doing revolutionary instrumentation and measurement. The data analysis techniques have had applications in healthcare, working with companies that make scanners to scan the retina of the eye to look for diseases. We've got probably the best quantum-driven experiments in the world, and that is transferable over to other fields. To look at changes in the water table so we can understand distribution of water under the Earth's surface. Gravimetry to measure how magma is flowing under volcanoes. The coatings that we make for our gravitational wave detector mirrors are super low absorption and they have to be very large. So there's a lot of industrial interest. So when you push the state of the art in measurement, the spin-offs from that feed back and affect people in their everyday lives. None of these things are possible without what happened in 2015. It all rests upon that foundation that we can do this, and it is enhancing our understanding of the universe. Gravitational waves are just another window into the universe. There's much more to discover, so being able to keep the window open, I think that the future will be very bright for us.